Hello, everybody. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch. And earlier this week, Unity had their keynote speech at the GDC. And one of the things they announced quietly was the UDP, or Unity Dis uh, Distribution Portal, which is currently in beta. And this is one of those things that right now isn't really that significant, but in time could become quite important. So I decided to take a quick look at it. There is a post up on their blog that we're going to check out right now. Then I'm going to jump in and kind of show you how UDP integrates in Unity and how the portal looks and works. So first off, what exactly is Unity Distribution Portal? beta. Well, what this is, it's basically a way of allowing you to publish to multiple app store and manage multiple app stores all at once. Now, the app stores currently available are a little lesser known, uh, but in time, you could see this becoming more and more important. As you kind of enter more markets, you could push your game out with less difficulty on your end. You still code your game one way and all of the things like in-app purchases and set prices and so on are managed by the UDP. You don't have to maintain these different stores. So it allows you access to different and more markets. Now do be aware that right now this is Android only and I don't know that it will ever really move beyond that because Apple's not gonna play along. Uh, but anyways, here's how it works. Basically in the Unity editor, you create and manage a single game build. Um, UDP consoles, you uh, choose which stores to distribute the game to and then the game is submitted directly to those stores. Don't worry, there's definitely more to it than that. But you can see here from the description, UDP reduces the engineering complexities associated with publishing to to multiple app stores, enables you to distribute and operate games in local markets and connect you with hundreds of millions of players worldwide through participating app stores. And the current list of app stores includes, um, right now, Catapult and Moo Store are both ready for publishing. Uh, Geo Game Store is coming later. So this one is uh, 280 million 4G smartphones in India. Catapult is 45 million active users with 81% revenue share. Moo Store um, integrated with popular payment methods used by 90% of players in Southeast Asia. And then there is One Store, which is also coming soon, which is the second largest app store in Korea with 17 million active users. So it gives you access to, you know, 100 million plus more new users for your app that you potentially didn't have before, or you would have to go through the public the process of managing each one of these app stores. And as you can see, they can get into more and more of these territorial deals and bring, make it so that you can bring your game to these markets much, much faster. Um, so we'll come back to the frequently frequently asked questions after the fact. First, I want to jump in and. Show show you it in action. Ignore that little error there. That's just Unity not liking the fact that I switched to an eGPU. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create a new project. I'll show you this process from scratch. So go up here, new. Uh, we will call this guy um, UDP demo. I'm going to create a 2D template just to keep it lightweight. Uh, what you want to do, actually, you're going to need to have an analytics enabled anyway. So make sure it's turned on here. Otherwise, that will not work correct, or well, you'll have to add it after the fact anyway. So it works a lot better. Add the analytics package right up front, and then give it a second for this to load. I'll pause while it's loading up, creating a new project, nothing exciting to see. And we are back in our newly created game. So now what we can do next is we go up here to window. We need to turn the uh, preview package on. Uh, so we're gonna come up here to the package manager under window. Make sure that under advanced, you toggle on show preview packages, at least while well, this is in preview, that is. And of course, you're going to want to scroll down to the U section, find the Uni uh, Unity distribution portal like so, and install it. Now, I'm going to just resize this window over here just to make sure that any important information isn't necessarily shown during this. So this is going to go ahead and install the UDP plugin for you. And da da da, let it go, let it go. So this can integrate fully with the existing in-app purchase system. Uh, you can just now manage them across multiple different stores. So it's now installed and you can tell if it's installed or not by going back to window and you will now have a Unity distribution portal there. And you can click and get the settings for it right here. So there is a code side aspect to this, but that is kind of the gist of it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a new UDP client. This will create it on their server. It's gonna be under some weird named GUID. And there it is, GUID's there. Project ID is there. Uh, so now we actually have it on our server account. And you need to, of course, have your Unity login and so on to make all this work. Uh, you can set up Unity test accounts to work with this. Uh, we also have some access to settings, but none of that you're gonna really touch. But what you can do is add a new in-app purchase right here. Uh, you can also do this in their portal. So for example, I could call this uh, sword underscore one underscore two underscore three a s. Just wanted to be something unique. Uh, we'll call this sword of paying to win. 
it is, oh, that's not a consumable. That would just be cheap. So we'll call it a non-consumable item. And it is $42 US. Buy, oh, give it a description, buy me and you win. Yar. And we just added a new in-app per, uh, okay, I just created another one. Did not mean to do that. But we just added a um, in-app purchase to our game. Uh, that's, yeah, that's just more of the same thing. So I'll delete that one. We'll click this little button here and push it up to the server. So now what we could do is actually go look at that server. Click here, go to the UDP console, and this will bring you to the appropriate website. So here is our newly created game. I click that guy and we will go into it. So here we can go into edit info. Looks like I might have to blur. Eh, no, nah, I don't think anything needs to be blurred yet. What I can do is come in here, go to um, edit the info for this game. We, and then we could do things like define the genre of our game. Uh, this game is awesome. So this is the information that will show up on the, the portal or the store. Uh, we'll give it a logo, the 512 by 512. It's, as you can see, uh, Android only. Um, we could give it a banner as well. Uh, give it a game title that is not the GUID. Uh, awesome game of awesomeness like so and then boom we can save that about our game now you'll notice there's a lot more here than just the basic information you can set up uh, the APK file to push out the package name OBB files and so on uh, if this is not an in-app or free-to-play purchase you can set the purchase price right there uh, you can create your in-app purchases now as you see the one that I just already defined is already here um, you can actually do these in line. So if I go back to the edit version, go down here, we could add another item in app purchase here. So we call this the shield. Oops. Uh, that should have been it. Uh, product ID to start to low, oh, start with a lowercase. Okay. Shield of gullibility. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Why do you not like that? Composed only of lowercase. Oh, lowercase. Gullible. All right. Um, and so on. So I could add a secondary item in here. You do have to define the price, which is later on. But you can see you can manage your um, your items on either server. We come here. We can say manage the amount, the currency that it's in. So I can click here. We could theoretically switch out the from USD, but I, I don't believe that is an option as of yet. Make that a $3 purchased item and save it. And you see we just defined uh, an in-app purchasable item from the dashboard side of things as well. And it kind of goes on and on. Um, so you've got some options for obfuscating your code. Um, but this is basically the portal you would use to define your game, define your game's in-app purchases, define your game's APK that you're going to push out, uh, various different versions. And then you can just kind of click over here and you can publish. Okay, so let's stay on page. We'll save that data. And done. So then we could go over to publish. Dun, dun, da, 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 dun, dun, da, da. And here you can pick which stores you want to publish to. Now, don't don't miss out the fact though. You still need to have an account with each one of these stores. They still pay you directly. Um, Google is just oh, sorry. Um, Unity is just facilitating the technological middle layer stuff here. So you'll still need to sign up to each one of these stores, put your account in. But then you basically say, yep, this guy, this guy, and publish. And that will push out your game to those stores and you should be off to the races. And apparently, according to um, Unity anyways, the, the sign up process is mostly just a matter of giving your Unity ID to that company. And then the majority of the details are still, uh, the technical detail, the publishing and pushing of your game is all managed and handled from the Unity distribution portal. Now on top of that, and you're not gonna see, <coughs> see much here because I quite literally have no data, but you can see um, analytics reports for how your game is doing, how much money it's making, how many people started it, how many people purchased stuff, and so on. Instead of having to go to each different store to find out how your game is doing, it is all consolidated in one spot. And then partner stores just kind of gives you an overview of the stores that are currently in place. Now, obviously, this is going to take some time to roll out to more and more stores, but as more stores are brought online, this tool itself becomes more and more valuable. So let's flip on back to those frequently asked questions for a few seconds, and you will see a bit more detail. What does UDP cost? UDP cost? It's free to developers. 
Um, what devices does it work with? Android only. Um, UDP support device optimization. No, UDP is a distribution solution. Uh, hardware uh, related optimizations are beyond the scope of the service. Do I need to register with the UDP stores? Yes, uh, but the streamline, it is generally streamlined. So you often just need your Unity ID to hook it up. Do I submit my games to the all UDP stores? No, you pick which ones as we just saw a second ago. What happens when I push my game to the store? Your game will be reviewed by each store you submit to. If the store accepts your game, it will be onboarded and coordinate the launch. You will always be notified of the status of your submission. Does Unity handle the store payouts? No. Again, this is a one-to-one -one relationship between you and each one of the stores. And once again, you do need to maintain an account with each one of the stores. So if you have payment disputes or whatever, Unity is just a middleman here. Um, my third party, my, my game uses third-party SDKs for tracking optimization ads, etc. Is it okay? Uh, will UDP block these services? No, UDP allows developers to connect to third-party SDKs. However, each store might block it, depending on their criteria. And does UDP support non-Unity games? And the answer there is only supports games with Unity. However, in the future, UDP will be engine agnostic. So you can actually use UDP as a, an actual universal distribution platform. So it is a, a unified API and uh, publishing system and reporting system all kind of together. It, it's definitely got a lot of interest. I kind of yawned over this during the um, whole presentation, but now that I think about it, if I published a game that had in-app in purchases and I was currently just on the App Store, well, this just opened up three new markets for me and with a fourth coming soon that I would have never thought to target because you know they're not my markets and I probably don't want to track sales separately and create a different install or binary for each one. In this case, you don't have to. You use the same uh, code to handle in-app purchases and Mi Unity's middleware is taking care of all that for you. Now, it'll be interesting when they go to Engine Agnostic, if they'll be providing an SDK, a universal in-app purchase SDK to keep this system working, uh, I imagine it will have to use something because there is going to be, obviously, between Unity and the stores, they've come up with a standard interface for talking about, um, you know, here's the purchase, here's the purchase data, and so on, so that the dashboard on the UDP side of things can even work. But there is a lot of potential on this one. I, I, like I said, I originally kind of glossed over this as a feature. It's not as sexy as real-time ray tracing or a new physics engine, but this one is tangible. This is the kind of thing that can, um, for very little additional effort, make you more money. And I like more money for less effort. I don't know about you guys, but... I do. <laughs> I like more money. So anyways, that's it. Hopefully, uh, at least uh, a few of you Unity developers found this interesting. If, if you are developing a Unity game right now or you've already got one, are you looking at checking out the Unity distribution portal? And more importantly, if not, why? Because this one just seems like, again, if you're using the IAP system and setup already, it's just more stores, more opportunity, and, and Unity has made the work a lot less. So I, I can't really see a major negative downside. Anyways, what do you think? Let me know. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.